Now, good evening. Hello, hello, hello. How are we all doing? It is a bit of a ramshackle evening, which I'm going to explain. Let's just move this down so everything's aligned correctly. How's the audio and video? Thank you so much, Medellin. Seems we are all right. Oh, okay, so. Sorry to those who weren't able to make it tonight because I shifted the time last minute. What happened was, um, there was a screening of uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey um, down at a cinema near me, and I had said to someone, yes, I would love to go. Completely forgot about it, and then said, yes, we'll do the stream on Wednesday. <sighs> and so, yes, I kind of double booked you. I'm very sorry about that. So I pushed the stream back one hour, and then I got back in time. But some other good news happened, which was Tailspire, the Kickstarter I'm part of, has just crossed um, its final stretch goal. So we are very funded, um, but we're also done with all of our stretch goals. So we now are funded to do the cyberpunk-themed assets, along with everything else, which is amazing. But it means I've spent the last hour just freaking out with the community over there, which is really cool. Uh, but yes, it means I'm so, so, so unprepared for this evening. But it's still lovely to be here. It's lovely to be hanging out with you, and I see a good bunch of faces. Let's remember where the new Twitter UI, not Twitter, uh, Twitch UI is. And let's get nattering. Okay, so good evening to bug number 13, Darius Davix Unit, Jace97. Ooh, that's a name I do not know. Aaron Hat... Um, I'm so sorry I'm going to butcher this. So it's Aaron... Hatanas. Aaron Hatanas. Okay, if I'm saying that wrong, please let me know how to pronounce that. I'd love to get it eventually. Indigo, Silverbell, McCabe, uh, Median, Chimera, Skinny Seat Horse, Talal, Trash Talk, Tyker. Oh, Tycholine's a bot, but greetings anyway, bot person. V and K and Virgo Pros. Hello. All right. General greets out of the way. We are going to be looking at. GPU occlusion culling, which is rather fun because it's something I'm considering using for work as well. Well, I just adjust this camera. I am so prepared. Um, so one of the things with Tailspire is I've just closed it. Uh, but one of the things with Tailspire is we have very large, potentially very large boards uh, and user generated content. So people can just build stuff the way they like out of these tiles. And that means they can just stack things and make all kinds of ungodly things. They can put as much detail as they like in these areas. And then they could just replicate that and have whole towns. And then whenever you, you point the camera somewhere, we've got to render all that. And we want to obviously cut down as much as possible because that gets rather expensive. And it's not like in a traditional game, um, or a, sorry, in a non-user content generated game where you can, to a certain degree, pre-bake loads of information out, especially do with occlusion, um, and use that to at least speed up things at runtime. So we need something a little more dynamic, and so I wanted to look into this. Now, this technique does use instance rendering and compute shaders and multi-draw indirect. So we're looking at a slightly later version of GL, but for the cards that support it, it could provide a qu quite the boost. Hopefully, anyway, that's what we're going to start looking into. We're going to do a very simple version of this technique, and we're going to spread out from there. And... Um, I am going to check out the chat. Pond Pimp, it's very good to have you back. And... Oh yeah, the hair! I'd actually forgotten I'd shaved all that off. McCabe, yes, I have I have been trimmed. It's got um, hotter than all of the balls over here, and um, that was too much, so it had to go. Plus, actually, I've been, I, was re I was ready for a change, so I've been, I've been threatening my hair for a while with going, so now it's gone. Um, dun, 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 dun. Thank you so much for the Kickstarter. Congratulations. It's super exciting. It means we've got a job. And not only got a job, we get to do the things that we had on our kind of our biggest things on our wish list that were like, oh man, wouldn't it be cool if we were able to do this sometime? So that's really exciting. Um, is the volume of the stream a bit low? Um, it's possible. Let me just double check the inputs on Windows because they're it might have thrown them down again, which is a bit, always a bit annoying when it does that. Oh, I can tell you why, actually. I think it's using the um, cam mic instead of the um, the proper mic. One second. How do we set this as default? Um, but it's still got the phone next to that. Hmm. One second. Tell me if we lose audio now. Is this gone? 
Or are you still able to hear me? Because that's looking a little better on the mic levels, I think. Um, and let's check the levels here. There are 94. Good. Not gone. Still on. All good. Hearing. Still hear you. Excellent. Okay, so I think that's as best as I can do from my end. So I will leave the rest to your volume controls. Okay, so let's get rid of the triplanar mapping stuff. Because as fun as that was, we're playing with something else now. We're going to come back to render dock at some point. Uh, little graphs and things we had in the last time. We were going to be looking at this. I think this was the example we're using. And so the general technique is going to be we are going to draw a bunch of simplified um, assets. Uh, so for now we're just going to use we're going to be drawing spheres. We're just going to use um, the same asset for both the um, depth um, buffer that we're creating and also for what we're finally rendering. But later on, we can use a simplification. Like we have a tile like I keep on closing uh, the Kickstarter one, but it's actually quite a good example. Kickstarter tail spire spur. I can still type as well as I've ever been able to, which is poorly. Um, so we have many tiles, say, like these corner pieces. Uh, we could simplify those to, say, a block and then use that. Or we could simplify it to just the three bounding boxes that would make up uh, the simplified version of this shape. And then we could, obviously, we would then render the high res version. But anyway, um, let's get back into here. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to write things out to um, the depth buffer. And then we're going to generate a MIP chain. So that's going to produce ever lower quality versions of that, ever lower resolution versions of that, I should say. And then we're going to be able to query into each one of those, depending on the size of the thing we're looking for occlusion uh, related to. Um, we kind of went through this a lot last week, so I won't go through all of it now. But first thing we need to do is actually set up a scene. So let's start with that. So let's load up slime. I, as you can see, I haven't even started Lisp yet. Because I am so ready. Great. Messian, you're a star. Thanks for getting the link into the chat. Amazing. I'm so lucky. Every project I'm working on at the moment just has an incredible community around it. And I'm really grateful. Just, just good people. Um, okay, so... Ah, let's get into play with birds. Let's start this. And this is our little scene that we were using for the um, triplanar mapping. As janky as it is, we're going to be replacing all of this. So we're going to just let's just start with one mesh. Um, and we are there's a primitives file, and we're not going to need the terrain anymore. So let's get rid of that for now. Well, let's leave it there. Actually, we might we might end up using it later. It could be quite kind of fun, actually. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure what the simplification would look like. That, but it doesn't matter. We don't need to remove it. Let's do make sphere instead. Make sphere, and we're going to generate one unit sphere, and then we're going to use uh, per instanced uh, values to set their position and set their size. So we're going to have different scales, different sizes, and just randomly placed spheres. Um, and that's going to be our test scene. So yeah, let's load this stuff. We've got a sphere. Um, let's reset everything and see what happens. We've got a horribly distorted sphere down there because it's <laughs> it, it's like I think it was a sphere mesh that they were then trying to displace uh, with a height map or was it with yeah with the noise data. Oh god, that's gonna be funny. Let's go and have a look at what we've got in render. Because we get to trim this down again now. Um, okay, so we're going to go back to the good old days of the bad version. Dun, 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 dun. So we'll get rid of this frag stage. We'll get rid of the triplanar tri blend. 
Um, we're going to get rid of this and we'll bring back this fragment stage and name it correctly. And let's check the vert stage and make sure that its outputs match the inputs over here. I'm seeing one that's used as the GL position and then three other outputs which match these three here. So let's assume that's all right. Um, and just a big pile of stuff. Do we use text norm for anything? Yeah, we do. OK, let's, uh, let's go with that for now. Uh, oh, yeah, that was from the normal sampling that we used to have. I don't think we need that per se. OK, so let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of sample offset because I don't think we need that anymore. I don't think we need the wire displacement. No, this is all getting, this is the get displacement stuff from our noise function. So let's get rid of that. We don't need the 2D position. We don't need the wire displacement. Um, and we'll take uh, the normal from the object. I and mean, I don't think we're bothering rotating them or anything like that. It won't matter, matter with the spheres right now. Um, so let's just let's just uh, take the normal from this, which we do with norm. Normal is norm of vert, and it's in object space. But again, because we're not transforming it, I don't think that's going to be a big problem for us right now. Symbol y disp is not there. That is correct. Um, model. POS3 can now be changed to this. And we should be back with our sphere. That's looking a little more, a little more normal. Hardy her. Cool. And it's got its traditional fragment shader now. So everything's kind of how we expected. All right. Groovy. So what are we going to do now? Let's just um, commit this because we've got some changes that we're keeping. So back to just the sphere. Let's check the chat. What's going on? <laughs> My game's saying purple heart. You're a Discord, you're a Discord person right there. I can see you. Um, let's start consing. Indeed, <laughs> all the memory is going away. Garbage collection freezes for the win. Right. Um, yeah, we've got to have the PHP fanboys. They're amazing. Omekel, yes. <laughs> We needed a we needed a sphere for the uh, for this um for this episode, so everything had to go. Um, so let's push that, otherwise Metian will not be pleased and will not grace us with his links. So that's gone. Let's generate that um, per instance data that we're interested in. So let's get back to base and let's just make a function. Just fool because I don't know what I'm doing tonight. Um, and what are we going to need? We will want, let's have a little struct per, um, for each instance, we need some data. So per inst data is going to be, um, oh, one thing, I just need to slime, slime enable concurrent hints. Um, so we have name and options and then slot descriptions. Excellent. So the first thing we're going to need um, is the um, the position, which is going to be of X3, and we will also need, what will we need? Um, scale. We wanted a scale, didn't we? So let's do that. And, uh, I mean, we could shove a color in there as well. Let's just, let's just do that for now. We'll put that there, and maybe we'll use it, maybe we won't, but it's not a big deal. So we've got that struct, and we are going to... Well, let's set this up. Um, we are going to need some data. So, how do we do this? 
Um, you know what actually might be nice? Let's just um, make the GPU array and then we'll map it to a C array so it's local and then we'll just do a loop and just write data into it because that'll be nice and easy. So, um, pib for our per instance buffer or per instance array. Pia! There's going to be a make GPU array. Uh, initial contents nil. Um, dimensions are going to be interesting. Let's have maybe a thousand spheres. Um, and the element type, which we'll bring down to the next line, is going to be the per instance data. That's cool. Um, and then let's do uh, with GPU array as C array. And the temp name is going to be C C R C R, and then PIA, which is the GPU array the access type. We don't care about because it's a sensible default. And we're going to go down here, and we're going to loop for I below below one thousand. Now we've got one thousand in two places, which is a bit gross. So let's go um, count. It's going to be one thousand, and we'll just do. Count here, count here. Let's go do set f, um, and then um, oops, for lm equals arefc of that c array at i. Okay, so that's going to grab the element, and now we're going to set data into it. So it is going to be uh, per its data pass. We haven't made accesses for it, so we're just going to do the full names of um, C array. And we're going to set this to a random position. Let's see what's going on. Common of him saying, I'm afraid for the Twitch servers right now. <laughs> 24 viewers. I know, it's big, big numbers. Not just for us, but for the world. Um, yeah, the Tails Bar servers have got... Woo! They have been busy. Second Commander, is everything quieting down a bit in general now? Hopefully, like, it's... We can just breathe out. We can relax. Um, <laughs> Darius won't be... Tails Bar won't ever be as good as the pizza shooter we did. It's true. It's true. When you've peaked, you've peaked. I'm just here, you know, to kind of while away my days until I just... You know, the merciful embrace of death will take me. Um, okay, so let's... <laughs> <laughs> so let's have a random position random from um so yeah let's uh anything within 200 um minus 100 right so we get a load of spheres cool and uh let's put that down there and we'll do For instance, data scale of the C array. Oh, it's not of that though, is it? It's not C array, it's LM. And this is going to be a random number um, up to 3 plus 0 0.5. I think that's fine. So hopefully that will run through. And then at the end, we are going to set f, and let's have some per inst data up here. Per inst data, um, which is nil for now, because it's GPU data, and it's not gonna it's not gonna be happy if we try and initialize it in a def var because we don't know what thread that's gonna happen on, um, for reasons which we'll probably talk about another time, or at least we can explain why it's unknown. Um, okay, so let's send this to be Pia. Um, let's do that outside so we know that the GPU array work has finished, the uploading is done, and then we will push this to here, except, yeah, that's right, yes. We've set that. I used the word push and confused myself. And that's it. I think that's all we need to do there, um, other than test it. Uh, so let's call this reset um, per inst data. Oh, 
There's a GPU array, how nice. Um, tell you what we'll do, we'll do a, su a select def, actually, seeing as that worked, that should be in the per its data thing, hurrah. Um, and then let's um, take a subsection of this, but a subsection of a GPU array, subsect G. Uh, we'll take that per instance data, we will take start at zero, and then we'll take 10, and then we're going to pull G of that, and we'll get some data. Um, what we should see is that this last one is going to be garbage. This will be all over the place. Um, the third one, because this is that color, and we didn't initialize the color, so we're just getting whatever was in memory at the time. Um, and then we should have a random position here between um, a minus 100 and 100 in all dimensions, which looks like what we've got. And we have a random value between 0 0.5 and 3.5, which again, looks like we've got. So I think we've set that up okay. Um, <laughs> ding! I saw a ding! I saw a ding! It worked! Some of you guys have to make me that bell. Or maybe that's... You know what? There is a lisp that runs on the Arduino, right? And I've got some Arduinos in the basement, for sure. Maybe we do that some week. We actually make the bell, so you can ring it to get my attention. I think we'd only... We'd have to have, like, only moderators can ring it, because otherwise this whole stream's gonna be the fucking bell going off. Um, okay, so let's let's uh, let's see what's going on here. I am dazzled by all the parentheses. Um, the cave is saying he's missed it again. He never sees my true identity. That's true. That is true. Certainly a Discord person. I, oh, it's it's Alex. Of course, it's Alex. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. I don't know what's going on. Um, oh, and you said it again down here. That's great. Uh, I am I am on the balls. Right. Uh, da, 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 especially when you try to focus on code. Yeah, it's fine. I, I love the Twitch chat. It's it's uh it's great. Yeah, we'll do some more doing a hacking. That sounds perfect. Yeah, like I. I there is no good time to ping me. Just keep on trying. I, I will <laughs> hopefully get there eventually. Um, it gets worse the closer to the end we get because I'm just like freaking out. Um, okay, so what are we doing? We made the struct. We made the thing. The data looks okay. Uh, we should do um, the thing that's when there's per instance data, free the per instance data. That's good. Um, for it to be consumed, it needs to be part of a um, part of the buffer stream that's being used to render this. So let's have a look at that now. Um, where is that made? Buffer stream. Okay, make. How dare you? Oh yes, that's actually part of this, isn't it? It's part of making sphere. Okay, which is part of this. This is one of these places where I'm not happy with. Uh, oh, not part of make instance, of course. Make buffer streams here. Oh no, yeah, make buffer streams here. Good. Yeah, this is one of the areas like the Lisp, the Keppel API is questionable. It's about this per instance data. It might be all right. It might not. We use the buffer stream as kind of the information that's required to to render things. But forget it. Like let's do, let's just keep going. So let's move this down. So now there's going to be two things that this buffer stream contains. It contains the vertex data, but we also need to contain the per ins data. Um, so yeah, that's not great. Oh well, for the, for the sake of this example, the radius is always going to be one. So radius is one. Then we've got cons. Again, I don't like this part of the API either, and I'm going to change it. We've got the per ins data, and that's going to be passed in. Right, so that's the GPU array. And then we say one. And this pair, this part, tells it how every this many instances um, increment the index into this. So um, we're going to render like a thousand spheres 
and this is saying for every instance we render increment one further through this uh, per instance data array. I'm never really good at explaining that and I don't like the fact I've used cons for this. I, I think we need to have a function that returns just a struct or something like this. Or even if it just returns a, uh, like a cons, just we have something clearer. But we have what we have right now and that is that. So let's go back to here where make sphere is happening. Per ins data, and that means up here we need to go reset per ins data like this. And now hopefully when we reset, that will be passed in. Let's just see what happens if we do a reset and if anything breaks. It does not break. That's good. Um, so far, so boring. Um, that's great. So now if we look at mesh. We can inspect that and we will see that wait a second so we've got oh no yeah oh, I'm an idiot look at what you're inspecting Chris we need to look at the buffer stream because that's actually what's interesting we have two GPU arrays we have the one with the data that's each uh, vert is in the GPNT struct format and the other one is of type per inst data and is a thousand of them and it's cons one to one per every instance. Right, let's just keep going. Let's plow through and was there a ping? Was there a ping? See the trash talk? Oh, bad Wi-Fi, that's a shame. Um, okay, so what are we doing? Right, now we need to render a load of stuff. So down here, let's forget all this render normal stuff. We don't need that. Um, we're going to not... We'll do a curl face. That makes sense. When mesh with slot speed stream, render the thing. Cool. That's great. Now we're going to say uh, with instances and a thousand of them, render. So now we're actually rendering a thousand spheres, but we can't tell yet. Um, and so we need to modify our shaders to take advantage of this. Um, let's see if it works. So let's go back to render. Um, and there's actually an interesting thing. This struct that we're using, this per inst one, I'm going to move that into this file because we're going to need it around when we compile these um, GPU functions. Um, so yeah. Inst data is going to be of type per inst data. Let's compile that. So far, everything still runs. Nice. Um, and now the idea is that we Ah, yes, we're not going to be using this model to world matrix anymore. Um, we're just going to offset it. So we'll just ignore that for now and we'll do plus um, model to world, no, not model to world, model position plus, and now we want, how do we want this? We want the position from this. So we could just do a with slots, boss, and scale. Um, from the ints data. Uh, I'm going to rename this to offset um, because POS is, we've used that so many places. And we're going to do model plus that. And it doesn't like it because this is a VEC3 and the other one's a VEC4. So that's fine. We are going to change that to a VEC4 now. Where are we? Offset. There we go. Okay, why do we not see anything here? So the model position has one in its W component, so we stick zero in ours because we don't want to affect that anymore. But we do want to add the offset to the XYZ portion of this, so that should have worked. Um, and then the rest is just normal. So I would have thought that was okay. 
assuming that other data is being read correctly. Um, we're getting recompiled, all right. And in here as well. Yep, we're running with instancing. That should be doing something then. So let's have a think. Let's have a look and work out what's going on. Um, check the obvious stuff. When we're making the sphere, we definitely passed in the per instance data. When we reset, it definitely was. You know, there was a GPU array with a thousand things going in. That's cool. Um, so far, no errors, but maybe that will be a silent failure. So that'll be interesting. Um, come on, Chris. What are we doing? Um, hmm. What now? Well, I suppose let's just make sure that that's, this is actually behaving how I think it should be. Is it compiling correctly? So we have, um, we're missing some stuff. Of course we are, wait a second. I've changed the signature up here, but I haven't told the pipeline which one we're using. So we're actually still using the older version. And now it's working because we're telling it to use the right GPU function. I love live coding, even though I'm stupid. So now we have lots of spheres, which is great. And we are going to scale them. So we are going to take this model position and we're going to multiply it by scale. Wait a second. Is that the right way to do it? Oh no, I know why, because when we're multiplying by scale, we're multiplying this as well. So let's take this out of here and put it up where it belongs, which is here. So we'll do multiply by scale. That's a bit better. So it's a little hard to tell because size might look like things are close or far away or things like this. Let's see if we can get down to a tiny one that's near. It's actually really hard with perspective. Okay, these two are really close to each other and they're clearly a different size. So that'll be all right. We should make that scale difference more and we should pack these things a little closer together so we can get a bit more occlusion going on because we need that for our test. So back to base, scale, and it's going to be random of, uh, let's try nine. And we'll do a reset. Well, there's definitely more occlusion going on now. Yeah, this looks good actually. So we'll definitely have cases where we can like move in close here and you can see almost none of the other spheres. And everything behind this one is being occluded. There's all kinds of things being occluded now. This will be a good a good start for our test. Nice. Okay. So we've got instant spheres. Um, Metaphan say push. Read your mind. Even before the ding. Um, Sankabadi made a nice screensaver. Yes, for 1992. That's what I use the technology of today for, for making things that would have looked eh, 20 years ago. Right. Um, okay. Right. So we've got this. And so we actually need to start doing the um, part of the occlusion techniques. The way we're going to do this for now, because so we don't have to think too much, is we're actually going to make this um, into a square and we are going to um, yeah and then like we'll, we'll, we'll make it into probably a power two well we'll make it into a square at least and then we'll think about power two as well um, okay 
so. Do, do. Actually, let, let's just, we'll be even lazier. Let's pick a specific resolution and go with that. Um, so let's look at the viewport resolution is um, yeah so what if we swap this out and just said 512 by 512 there we go it's a little off my screen um, but it's better than going down to half of that Darius is saying by the way your last stream on YouTube is only one is that one hour 15 long or one minute 15 long? Oh, for fuck's sake. What happened there then? That's really weird. So there could be a number of reasons for that. Let's check the disk space on my main machine. Free space, free space is 35 megabytes. Oh, okay. So I guess we've lost this episode as well. Thank you. That's very frustrating though. Um... Christ on a cracker. Um, what a bummer. Okay, so... Well, we've got all the other streams up there, so I, I can afford to delete these ones. I'm just looking at 25 giga files here, and I'll just delete those with reckless abandon. Um... We can get, okay, so we can get last week's episode from Twitch, and we can get this week's episode from Twitch. It'll be stored there, so I'll take those, um, and I'll download them, yeah, and then, or I'll just push them to YouTube. Okay, so that is, that's fine. That's really good to know, thank you so much. Um, I'll have to put out, <laughs> apologies for that as well. That's okay, there's only like 20 of us, it'll be alright. 24, 24 people. Um, that's sorry now I've just disrespected all the ones who watch on YouTube sorry god that's really annoying alright okay so 512 by 512 uh, def var uh, vp size is 512 by 512 let's do that then Okay, so let's work with this, and then we'll we'll just keep on going. Oh goodness, what am I doing? I really don't know why I'm bring, keep bringing that up. Oh, I'm tabbing somewhere on it. Okay, never mind. Slow down, have some coffee, and stop worrying about the file. And we'll um. And we'll be okay. Nice. So. Um, we want to start rendering to our buffer. So what we're going to do is we are going to start with a... Um, what do they call this? That's the interesting thing. Is this an occlusion map? I keep on trying to tab over to the other window, but I've got... I've been dealing with windows for a while, so I'm muscle memory is all wrong. Okay, so they call this the occlusion buffer. I think. Render the depth of all main occluders to the occlusion buffer. Great, that's what we're going to call it too. Um, so the occlusion buffer is going to start off as nil, and we're going to go work out what it needs to be. So we're going to make a texture which has no initial contents, um, has the dimensions which come from um, VP size. That's going to be interesting. Can we use? I don't know if that takes a vector of that um, let's just do this okay and the um, element type ooh this is going to be interesting so what element types do we support? Um, 
It's going to be one of the image formats. I know where the file is, so let me just do that because it's going to be quicker than me trying to remember the correct way to um, the correct thing to look up a documentation, which is a very clear sign that I need to do much better with this. But still, um, so do we just use a depth like format? Or do we go and just use float or what is it? Let's have a look. They're using a depth stencil view, which is interesting because I don't think they use the stencil portion of it. Um, I mean, it's probably a, it would be a depth 24 stencil eight, but I don't really know. Let's start with depth component 40, like 24 and um, and go from there. This is interesting as well. Um, because what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make an FBO to render this into. But if we make an FBO, it's very easy for us to get a um, depth thing in anyway. Let's have a look at that. Make FBO uh, with D, um, and we just need to set the dimensions to be um, let's just do this do, 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 do. BP size this what happens if I do that okay error passing arguments to destructuring bind oh, another case where I've got a bad um, <sighs> a bad uh, list there Okay, so let's have a look. Oh yes, of course, I remember why. Okay, so we have a depth, an FBO there with a depth attachment. The depth array is of depth component 24 type and the dimensions are 512 by 512. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's how we're gonna make this. Um, we're gonna have an occlusion buffer FBO. Um, and we are going to, let's make a function down here. Defun reset occlusion buffer. Um, let's just free that one we've already got there. Free. Um, set F um, occlusion buffer FBO to this FBO. And then we're going to set f the occlusion buffer itself to calling text ref. No, not text ref. Wait a second. We want to get the attachment from occlusion buffer FBO, and we want the depth attachment. So we'll just do that. And let's just free the old stuff. So when there is an occlusion buffer buffer, buffer FBO, we can say free. Um, occlusion buffer FBO uh, and free occlusion buffer like that. Let's try that. Reset um, occlusion buffer. It did something. Uh, so then occlusion buffer has the GPU array. Occlusion buffer FBO has that. I see things moving over in chat, so I will be there momentarily. Let's just get this into the code so it's going to work with reset. If I could just stop typing the wrong thing. Who knows what is possible? Okay, so we've got an FBO. Uh, still referenced, uh, still a reference to thing vert stage uh, GPNT in the current version. Oh, in render, really? That's strange, because I think I've pushed that, because the only thing that's out of date at the moment is base. This is on episode 75 as well. In draw normals. Oh, okay, yeah. Actually, we can, we can remove that, because we're... Um... 
because we have we are done with that for now and I know in like 10 minutes I'll be like oh I really wish I could draw normals okay move draw normals at least then we can uh, just revert that commit if we need it back and um, make occlusion buffer okay we made that bit small didn't we all right so back to base what are we going to do with that we are going to render everything into it i guess that's it um one important part here is the only thing we actually need to do is render in the depth information. We're not doing any pixel output. So I think what we can do is we can definitely, and definitely you can do it in direct text, is just elide the fragment shader and just let it write the depth information. I think that's the same in OpenGL. Let's just try it. If we get something that looks reasonable, hooray. And if not, we'll go explore and see what there is to do. And we shall start by um, going down to where we do the rendering and we will say with FBO FBO bound sorry and it's the occlusion buffer FBO and we may need to tell it which attachment to use for size because we don't have an attachment otherwise attachment for size is D um, I think that's fine let's do that what happens now of course, nothing is visible on the screen because it should all be written into that FBO. And we're going to see if it was. So as frame, now we can do draw text, which is a helpful function from Nineveh. And we are going to draw the, um, well, let's have a little occlusion buffer sampler. So that'll be handy. Um, let's see if this works. Attempted to sample, but is it only legal to sample textures? Of course. Thank you very much. That is correct. Um, so let's just say continue. And we want to sample the. Um, GPU array text triplets. Let's try that. That looks a little better. Cool. So now make the occlusion buffer sampler. And it's it's almost it's completely invisible in yours. Uh, which is kind of annoying. And I don't have a way to Oh no, there is a color scale. Hurrah, let's have a look. So color scale. What can we do to try and make that worse? <laughs> um, that's just going to make it just completely white. So that was a terrible idea. 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. But it's going to make it, it's just going to be darker. It's not going to be any relatively better. We wanted to raise it to the power, really. OK, so that's not super helpful. But I can see that there are spheres in here. Um, oh, fuck it. Let's just make a little helper function, because it's going to be no fun if you can't see what's going on. Um, def pipeline G. Oh, of course, it's rendering into there at the moment because we haven't removed the frag stage either. Um, Median saying just add per inch data to draw normals. Well, we could do that, but maybe, maybe I just want to rip code out. Um, blit. That's what we're going to call this. And what's Blit going to do? It's going to have a vertex um, stage, which is actually we can just write this. Just say Blit vert, um, Blit frag, Defun, and these are both going to take back two, back two. Back to, it might be today that we're mainly setting things up, but we'll see how it goes. Ah, no, we're not even an hour in yet. This is fine. Defun blitvert. Um, that should be defun g, of course. 
UV is VEC2. Texture, you need a uniform. Sam, which is a sampler, 2D. Sure, let's do that actually. And just do Sam at UV. Bam, that's fine. This one is vert, and it's a VEC2. And we need to do a few values. The first one is we take the vert and we just do this. And then to turn it into a UV, um, we just need to remap it. So we're going to times it by 0.5 to half its size. And then we're going to plus 0.5 um, to shift it. So that's vert frag. Um, Blit it, sampler, um, map G. Um, what are we going to use for the pipeline function? It's just called blit. The stream is going to be one that we grab from Nineveh because there is a um, what's it called? Nineveh. Um, Oh, come on, where is it? Quad. I know it's in here. Get quad stream v2. That's what I want. Get quad stream v2. That's going to be our helper one. And then Sam is going to be our sampler. And hopefully now we can go back to base. And instead of draw text we can do blit it and it's going to be kind of the same except it draws a little bigger that's fine and uh, let's just let's see what happens if we just raise this to the power of two rubbish can we not do that with uh oh yeah you just can't just do that with uh with that fine okay so we'll take the x and we'll raise that to a power of two okay let's raise it to the power of five Let's raise it to the power of 10. And hopefully, you're beginning to see a lot of spheres back there. There we go. Cool. Right. So let's have a look back into the chat. <laughs> what have I missed? Right. Um, Darius has to go. Oh, no. Sorry, man. See you all. Well, so see you next week. I'll see everyone next week, hopefully. Uh, da, 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 da. Jason's back. Hello. Okay, so this is the um, this is the occlusion buffer. We've got some depth information now. Hoorah! And we've got our silly thing here, which is going to make it a little easier to see this depth stuff on the stream. Um, that's great. I would love to get the color like depth shit fixed in OBS. And we did before, and then it went wrong again, so I don't know. But it's not what we need to worry about now. What we do need to worry about is we need to create the hierarchical Z MIP chain, which basically means we're downscaling this in a certain way, and we're doing it one at a time. So we downscale it, and we get a new texture. Then we downscale that, we get a new texture. And this apparently is the function. And it's very interesting. So, this high Z MIP chain could also be used in other contexts, for example, speeding up volumetric fog calculations, screen space reflections, etc. That's good to know. I'm using a compute shader to do the downsampling, although I don't expect a particular advantage in doing so. We're going to use FBOs and, and fragment shaders just because it's very easy for us to set up. We're going to be getting to compute soon, and at that point, we're going to have to do some reading and some poking around for examples, because I haven't done compute in quite a while. And I haven't done things serious in it, I don't think. No, it's been... It's, yeah, this will be the first decent project I'm doing in compute, I think. But it won't be bad. It's all fun stuff. Okay, so I'm using a compute shader to do the down sampling, uh, blah, blah, blah. If you in your downsampling shader, in each step, you can use either four texture reads or a gather operation, which will return four depths with one read. Now that is very interesting. 
What is the equivalent to gather in GLSL? Go. I'll copy this over, and uh, then we'll <laughs> then we'll find out. We'll see if you beat me um, in finding out. Let's just chuck this up here. Uh, bring this down to a new line. Formatting for streams where my resolution is bad. Ah, and my fingers are rubbish. Okay, so. Who is this idiot? Why can't he type? Um. Okay, let's just chill out and have a look at what we've got here. That's deceptive formatting. That's how it should be. Okay, so... Push with the blitz. Sure, I can do that. So we want to not do the downscale thing, we'll send this. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so let's look at downscale now. And there's this gather function, that's really interesting. So let's first look at the direct x to OpenGL slash Vulkan terminology thing. And let's look at what a gather might be. So gather isn't in here. So let's go direct x. Oh no, it's going to be H HLSL gather. But it's not that. Is, is it gather four? No, it's just gather. Input RT. We'll have to find out what that is as well. And output RT going to be a texture. Oh yeah, I can see four samples. This is looking promising. Gets the four samples, red component only, that would be used for bilinear interpolation when sampling a texture. Ah, yes. So that would be getting the four adjacent samples, I guess. I remember something vaguely about this, but I don't know that much. It's one of those areas that when I read into it, um, you start digging into kind of mipmap information and all this kind of stuff and the the dx and dy stuff cool okay so let's find out what the equivalent to GLSL equivalent to gather. I know we have something for this actually. Or maybe, I don't know actually, do we? <laughs> oh. This looks promising. Oh, we have one called texture gather. Well, shut my face. Okay. And then, of course, we just want to check that I haven't been crap. Texture, gather, control VV. Of course, we have it in Vario. Hooray! And here's the documentation. Well, let's read it in the browser anyway. So it takes some kind of sampler. This is the one we're interested in. A position and an optional int for something called comp. Okay, so comp is specifies the component of the source texture that we use to regenerate the resulting vector. Okay, so we are, can just use X. So I guess that's what the default is going to be anyway. Um, so that's like, so yeah, I don't think that was option option was available in Gather here, was it? Oh no, no, they've probably got a different function for doing that same thing. 
Oh, Medigan. On the ball with that. Oh, wait a second. Was this from Antero? It is as well. Oh, such a good... Always a good source of information there. Um... Okay, and then Ref Z, I have no idea what that is, but it also doesn't apply to this stuff up here, so I guess I won't worry about it too much. It specifies the reference Z value used for comparison of shadow forms. I don't know what that means. Um, excellent, look at this. Great. Okay, it specifies the sampler to which the texture from which Texels will be retrieved is bound. Yes. Okay. Give us a sampler. Specify the position um, and comp and ref we've already looked at. If specified, the value of comp must be a constant integer expression, diddly diddly diddly, uh, 0, 1, 2, or 3, specifying that. Um, if comp is not specified, it's treated as 0, which is the x component, which is great. Um, I would really love some documentation teaching us about texture gather and what it's for. Um, GLSL texture gather. Yes, the bilinear filtering stuff. Oh, it's been so long since I've read about any of this. Texture gather access. Oh, well, yeah, okay, so that, that only arrived in four. But then SSBOs and, well, Compute landed. Compute, did, did that land after that? I guess uh, SSBOs did, so we'll always have it if we have those. Well, OpenGL standard filtering abilities are useful, sometimes it's useful to be able to bypass filtering altogether. In order to do that for textures that are two-dimensional, you must fetch values from the four texels nearest the given texture coordinates. OpenGL provides you... The following function to do this. Blurb. These functions only fetch a single component from the texture. Um, yep, we knew that. All filtering is ignored. These functions fetch just one component at a time. Yep, but they return four values because it's the four points. Um, top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. That's good to know. Bam, 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 bam. Right, that's good. Um, we don't know what shadow sampler fetches are. I remember shadow being a like an image format, I think. Yeah, that's going to be some stuff in there. The offset versions apply to pixel offset of the texture coordinates before doing the fetch in the same way that standard offset texture functions. Texture offset. Oh, gather offsets is different in the each the four texel fetch locations has its own offset. Wow, okay. We're not messing with the offsets, I don't think. Let's just have a look at gather actually and see. They have the sampler and the texture object, apparently you have to have both, and the location, and they do have an offset. But are they using it in our little case over here? Little house on the prairie. Where are we? Come on. Did I shove it in render? I probably shoved it in render. Okay. So no, they're using two arguments, which is just the... Oh no. Shut my face. Okay. Let's have a look. Input rt.gather. The sampler state, and they're saying sampler point. Is that going to be? I wish I could see what those arguments were right now, because I'd love to know the type of this, because it would help narrow things down. So it could be that it seems strange that something would be called sampler point if it's a sampler state. So that feels more like it's going to be location, which would mean this would be offset. And if they're specifying the offset, then we need to specify it too, which means we want to use gather 
would gather offsets. Let's have a look. Any thoughts from you people? Oh, suddenly silence. Um... Hug number th 13 was asking a while ago, is there a standard CL library for serializing data? I've used conspack a lot in the past, but is there a better one? Actually, I don't know. Um, I would love to hear some input on that as well. I'm sure Shimera has some um, opinions there. Texture gather offset is going to be probably what we need to use. In fact, I'm currently guessing it is what we need to use. What a confusing thing. Let's have a look. So text cube in this case will be this text cube up here. Gather and then S is sampler state and then F is SV position. Okay. What is a sampler state? That's what I need to know. I'm still quite new in my HLSL, so I'm a. Uh, whenever I'm writing shaders, I'm always kind of translating in terms of um, GLSL at the moment. Okay, so this is talking about the sampling parameters. Okay, so this is what we set outside on sampler objects in OpenGL. Um, they actually specify an HLSL. Okay, well that's fair, but um, mildly confusing. So here, if you've got three arguments, it seems that's when you're using the offset. So okay, sampler point may just be simple sample state data then and this is just the position um okay so i think we i think we get away with this quite easily then okay so let's just do let's do a gather and see what we get text to gather doesn't feel great, but it'll have to do. D fun G uh, downscale. So how shall we do this? Let's just do the um, Not GL position, sorry. What's it? What is the um? Sample position? That feels weird too. GL frag core. That sounds familiar. But that's going to be in. The window relative. Sorry about the size. It's just so I can read it quickly. The window relative coordinates of the current fragment. Available only in the fragment language um, is an input variable that contains window relative coordinates for the fragment. Um, okay, so then we'd have to divide it by the size of um, the texture, I suppose, so we're sampling in the right place. Unless texture gather works like um, text fetch, which I would imagine it doesn't, though. We're just gonna have to play with it and see. Um, text size, well, we know what that's gonna be, but we'll write this anyway. And uniform uh, text size is vec2. And Sam is going to be our sampler to 
3D. <sighs> so let's depths. Come on, Chris. Not enough coffee. It's probably too much booze from the celebration earlier as well. I can love that every week I make excuses for the typing. Like anyone's gonna believe I'm not just bad at typing. Even me. It's just dumb. Um, okay, so that's for every point we're we're sampling at those positions. Find out and return the max depth. So that is all oh right. Well, that's very simple, isn't it? We can just get rid of this and do. Um, yeah, let's drop this back actually. Okay, max of max of x of depths and y of depths and. Um, max of z of depths and w of oops w of depths okay gl frag chord is undefined but in fragment it will be defined but there is no applicable method of glsl function divide when divided by a vector that's absolutely correct so let's swizzle that out and uh, we should be okay um I mean, we could just pass in the UV regardless. I mean, we're going to be doing this with a a blit, right? We're going to be doing something very akin to a blitz. We could actually just pass in the UV. Let's just do that. Let's get rid of this. Let's pass in the UV, which is a vec2. And we don't need to calculate anything. We've just got this. We just do that. That'll be fun. Um, and we we'll, we can probably test this. So um, I guess let's go and try just call this function straight from the REPL, uh, which Keppel has some support to do. So then if we if we just say 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is going to be our UV, and SAM is going to be our um, occlusion buffer sampler. <laughs> We get some information. Uh, so it's 0 0.94. Apparently that's what it is. Um, we would have to test this some other way, but at least we're getting a result back. And let's try different numbers and see that we get something different. So 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.99. That's interesting. I suppose this is only looking actually very different because, uh, yeah, this is looking so stark and different because I've, oh, what did I do? Because I raised the uh, values to a power. So they're all actually quite similar. Uh, we just use the power to um, differentiate them a bit. Um, let, we could actually bring in the max draw distance because we're not drawing that far and that might actually have an effect. Let's just go and play with this. So far as 2400, let's just set it to about like 600 or something like this. Um, there we go. And then let's go back to render. And when we're doing EXPT, wherever it is, EXPT, let's just take it down to 10. Ah, 20 then, because we can still see some stuff. Um, and now let's just check if those values have changed. It's 0 0.99 on that one. Maybe it won't have. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just like that. I was expecting a bit more variation, but. Maybe that's just what we deal with right now. Fine, let's. I'm not going to sweat it because there's clearly not there's clearly enough stuff that I don't understand that I'm not able to make sense of the values I'm getting back. So let's we'll roll forward and then we'll have to address all of these at the same time. Okay, so where is our uh, experiment stuff here? Okay. 
So what we need to do is uh, do the downscaling now four times. That bit's easy. We're going to start off with the same thing as blit. In fact, we can just use the blit vert function. So let's take this and um, downscale it. It's going to take a sampler. Um, get the quad stream. We get the sampler. We I think that's it, isn't it? We need a new pipeline, of course, for the blit. Oh, I just felt myself flag. Okay, so downscale pipeline. Um, it's blit vert, and then it's downscale. Just taking a vec two. Yes, that's correct. Do this, downscale it, and we'll go into base. And instead of doing um, blit it, we'll say downscale it. And I can see the faint circles again, which means that bit is working, but you won't, um, and that's okay. So now we're going to need to have the. Um, so th they're calling this a MIP chain. So let's. Um, I assume we can just use uh, MIP maps for this. So. Running the compute sh shader as many times as you need to produce the required number of MIPs. What are the required number of MIPs? Do we want to do it for every MIP level? I guess we could. Um, in which case, let's have a look. Because our FBO doesn't actually tell this, I don't think, to generate MIPS. So let's have a look what we've got here. Um, MIP map levels is one. Yeah. Again, mipmap levels, do those apply to depth components? Oh, we're doing some other stuff as well. Actually, we've missed out some steps. Okay, so one of the things we wanted to test out was when we rendered into this buffer, let's um, go back to render here and put in, oh, not render, sorry, base. Okay, when we did this, um, that was us blitting things out, which was fine. So I guess it's this bit. This render, actually we'd like something a little different. Um, we'll call this populate occlusion buffer. That's actually what we want to be doing. And we're going to make, instead of the sum pipeline, we wanted to do um, the OC pipeline or occlusion pipeline. Let's do that. We're going to shove that in. For now, it's exactly the same, so nothing should change, but it did. It did. Okay, let's bring this back here. Why didn't it like that? Okay, all right, I just hadn't compiled it before. Let's say continue. Okay, so we're still um, we're still running. Oh, we're not doing a clear apparently. That's good to know. Um, okay, so let's do... Um, With FBO bound, clear that. Let's just do then uh, clear FBO occlusion buffer FBO, right? There we go. Um, now that's done. That might have had an effect before as well. Um, now that's done. 
what do we need to do? What time is it? 23.20. Okay, we've got 40 minutes left. Um, populate occlusion buffer. Do, do, do. We wanted to remove this stage and see what happens. Well, yeah, some things do happen. Um, we don't need text scale anymore, and we don't need sampler, and we don't need that. But that doesn't write out to the depth buffer, apparently. Um, we don't need sampler. When we do this, it's going to cause an error in base because we're passing in three arguments. We don't need one of them. What was the sampler? And let's say continue. Okay, so we're running again. But apparently, we're not writing to depth. Let's pull G um, uh, occlusion pipeline. And we can see that we've just got a vertex stage. And if we compile with just a vertex stage, it will have told it, it will have disabled fragment rendering. So if we go in here, this will be a um, disable. Yeah, so there's like the rasterizer discard is here. When it doesn't have a fragment stage, rasterize a discard. Um, so we should look up that actually. GL um, Let's see what's going on in chat though. Um, texture size is a GLSL function. Thank you. I always forget that. Why the uniform? Um, yeah. Well, we got rid of that, luckily. Um, Pond Pimp's got a link for a typing game. Thank you for trying to teach me to type better. Um, Median saying the sound level is quite higher than the stream, so it was a bit of a startle. Oh, for that game, yes. Um, <laughs> oh man, we must be coming through quiet today, then that's interesting. I'll have to test that. Um, all right. So answers to the serialization thing, Mfiano is saying, um, other than cons pack, there's also CL message pack RPC or CL store, um, but prefers cons pack as well. Okay. <sighs> if enabled, primitives are discarded immediately before the rasterization stage, but after the optional transform feedback stage. That actually sounds like the wrong thing to do then because we don't want to discard We don't want to discard the primitive because we do actually want to write the depth of the fragment to the depth buffer. But we just don't want to do any of the blending or anything like that that comes with the output. How does discard affect the depth write? That's interesting, actually. I'm not sure. Um, uh, let's say OpenGL uh, shader without... Uh, Fragment stage, and let's just see what comes up. Two, two, two. So, nothing useful there.
So vertex post processing does a transform feedback, primitive clipping, perspective divide. Okay. Da, 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 da. Just scanning through this now to see if there's anything. Okay, fragment shaders are optional. If you render without a fragment shader, the depth and stencil values of the fragment get their usual values, but all but the value of all colors that a fragment could have are undefined. Rendering without a fragment shader is useful when rendering only a primitive's default depth information to the depth buffer, such as when prefer performing occlusion query tests. It's very nice. But I thought at some point, I must have thought that you needed to use rasterize a discard if you didn't have a fragment stage. And I don't know why I would have done that unless there was something that told me that was a good idea. Or maybe, I, what actually probably is, is I read something that was saying, hey, you want to use this if you're... I probably read that in relation to transform feedback when I probably added the feature. And I thought, oh, like if you're not using fragment stages, you don't need that, so you disable that whole thing. And I didn't know there was a time where it was actually useful. That's very likely. Oh, excuse me. Ah, let's have a look. Okay, transform feedback without a frame buffer. Blah, blah, blah. Um, ah, cool. Okay, so I will have run into this situation, which is, hey, you're trying to do vertex shader and you don't need the fragment shader because you're not using the output. You just want to do transform feedback. So you've gone to disable this. Um, like, and if you don't specify, it's going to freak out because there's no FBO set up. Oh, that's... Oh, GL check frame buffer status. Wait a second. Let's have a look at this. Core specification. Effects on frame buffer completeness on frame buffer operations. Okay, so they're just not frame buffer complete. Okay, for example, it is generated when a rendering command is called and the frame buffer is incomplete, even if rasterize or discard is enabled. Okay, so this doesn't look related. Uh, what you need to do is work around this is create an FBO we want. Okay. Interesting, but I don't think that's quite what I was after. Yes, I think I just had a case where I didn't want to have to have an FBO. I didn't want to affect an FBO. In it. Like, I, yeah, I didn't want to write anything out to a buffer. And the only way to do that was to disable, um, was to enable rasterize a discard. But that's now bitten us in the bum. Okay, so this is just me being short-sighted when setting up this API. So at the moment, any time there's not a fragment stage, it's gonna do rasterize a discard. Luckily, this is just an optimization for us at the moment. So that is a bug. So let's go out onto Keppel issues and file yet another one. I'm so looking forward to getting back to work on um, on Keppel and stuff like this on the regular. Um, so Keppel always enables a rasterizer. Well, let's. If there is no uh, fragment shader, this is wrong, as it can be very useful um, to 
time there. Okay, uh, but still affect the death stencil buffer. Yes. Um, the current behavior kills a bunch of optimizations. bug and I'll get to that soon so for now at least we found out what that was that's good so it's just me being a dummy but either way we don't really need to do anything with this we'll still keep it like this you know bring that back um, Okay, so I suppose for now, what do we do? What do we do? No, I suppose for now we can we can bring all of this back. Do that. Saying talking about argument issues, um, we'll do. Yeah, that's back to normal now. Oh, I'm losing my words. Okay. Oh, of course, of course, I'm getting issues. It's the uh, it's not the arguments here. It's being the it's the argument being passed in here. Um, okay, we're back. Blimey. Okay, so change file plane. Um, on downscale. Okay, um, that was confusing. All right, so back to what we're actually meant to be doing. Uh, we, do, we have this downscale function. We are going to render the first time into, um, the occlusion buffer. And then outside of with instances, we're gonna have to, how do we want to do this? Do we make one FBO for each attachment? I suppose that's a very easy way of doing it. Um, 23, 33. Man, I'm flagging. Um, yeah, so we can make a few FBOs. Oh, we've still got other questions we haven't answered yet, which is to do with MIP mapping and depth attachments. OpenGL MIP map depth attachment. Is that? That doesn't sound right to me. Um, I, I wouldn't have thought there were MIP maps to the depth buffer. But if not, that means we need to use, um, then we need to change how our FBO is set up. So at the moment, we've created an FBO with a depth buffer and we're looking at it here. But what we could do is we can make a color attachment. Can a color attachment just hold the depth? I mean, I suppose we could use floats. And that will be fine. Um, but I'm not sure what is allowed, to be honest. Let's have a look at gel frame buffer texture 2D. This is just where, outside of my knowledge. Okay, so for color attachments. What are the valid things? Uh, 
Okay, that did not help. Um, let's look at OpenGL and bitmaps and just go back to basics. Let's see what it has to say about depth. Stencil texturing. Ah, did it to me. talking about filtering between mitmaps and being complete I don't see something in there that specifies oh yeah it seems odd to me that so mitmap depth attachments let's just have a look at that depth buffer or depth texture this is interesting um, oh no they're talking about render buffers here that's a different thing um, You can define its internal format as depth component. Um, yeah, so I guess what they're actually meaning is that our color attachment should be using depth component as the element type, and then we'll have mitmaps on that. Let's just see what that looks like. Let's, let's just try and make that here. Um, I hope I haven't... Um, Made another bug in Keppel that means this won't make sense. But uh, element type uh, will be depth component 24. Um, we're going to do mitmap t and generate mitmaps. I mean, we don't need to. Uh, must specify dimensions. Of course, we will. Um, dimensions is, in this case, is... What do we call it? BP size. There we go, actually, that works. Interesting. All right. It's a lot of MIP levels as well. I guess we're gonna have to do it that many times. That's interesting. I don't know how many MIP levels we realistically need, uh, but we for this, well, let's just do a chain of, of 10. Um, let's see what's going on. Okay, regarding stream sound, it gets better when you get come close to the camera just saying. Okay. Starting PWV, but playing with that's fresh now, gives a screen of flickering. Interesting. That also sounds... So I've introduced some bugs there. So what I'll do is probably is uh, shortly after the stream, I'll have to fix that up. Or maybe, maybe we'll fix it up on stream because I'm very aware right now that I am... Like, as of about 15 minutes ago, my brain has really started shutting off, and I'm just very tired. So I think I might call the stream off early, but what we can do before then is just try and get this into a state where um, we can start again without any issues. And, uh, yeah, let's find out what's going on. Let's find out what's going on. That's a better use of our time right now, because I'm just a bit, a bit dead after today's happenings. Uh, well, that's silly. We don't need that. Pond Pimp's having to head off. All right, see you, mate. Don't worry, you're not going to miss anything now. It's just going to be clean up. And, uh, yeah, have a good one. I will uh, catch up with you at a later date. Oh, dear me. Bug number 13 saying, all right, I'm going to leave too. Have a good night. Yes, see you. Um, okay, so this is complaining about some stuff. Let's see what it is.
Okay, so we've got some ordering issues in this file. Blipbert is used up here, so we're just going to take this, move it up here, and retry. Oops. There we go. That's the first little issue. Let's jump there and we'll say play. And actually, that looks good. I think that might have been it. I'll push that. Uh, fix startup. And if that's gone, all right, let's uh, let's call it an evening because I have stopped being able to do useful coding. Thank you so much for coming by. Um, what we're going to do next week is we are going to just carry on with this. We're going to try and get a deeper understanding of what the gather stuff is doing. We'll get the downsampling done and then we can get on to compute, which is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, again, sorry for those who are confused with the starting late. It's been a doozy. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you all next time. Have a good one. Peace.